A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about how you can get an amazing photo it's like this and this with just one visit to a new location. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. Thanks ever so much for the really amazing comments on last week's video from Ireland. Uh, I really appreciate them and yeah, I'm really pleased that I managed to get some good photos like those ones that I just showed you at the beginning. Um, it was a lot of planning that went into that actually and that planning was really, really worthwhile because obviously my trip was curtailed due to illness. And what I wanted to do was talk a little bit about how I go about that planning part of it, and then when I'm on location, how I make the most of that location, especially when I've only got one visit to it, because I talk a lot about going to um, location time after time after time, which is really how you get the best out of a location. But what happens if you only have that one chance to go to a location? And that's certainly what it was like for me when I used to go on holidays, or I used to go on trips um, with my wife, Anne, um, I remember going to Iceland and she was super patient <laughs> and um, but I always felt a little bit of not pressure but just I just felt like I, I didn't want to keep her hanging around um, and I wanted to make them the, the most out of that location with a, a curtailed amount of time really so I'm going to go through that I'm going to go through the plan and I do and I'm going to talk about it in a bit more detail. So there's a few new locations that I've been to recently where I haven't had um, a huge amount of time at those locations or I've just been to one um, location at each country. So um, one is Iceland and the Highlands of Iceland. Never been to the Highland of Iceland before and I only had one time to go to these locations in the Highlands of Iceland. And I managed to get some good shots. I'll talk about those uh, in, in a minute and, and some of the maps and some of the things and tools that I use to get those. Island, which we know about. Um, it was just a short trip. I've never been there before. And the other one was Madeira. Again, it was a seven day trip, so a little bit longer than, than the other two, but um, it wasn't a long trip. And I, I, I went to some locations just once and I wanted to make sure I got the most out of it. And basically it's experience over the last uh, 30 years that has told me that it's the planning part of it and what you do when you get to location that makes a difference between a really great shot like this and some more average shots like I got when I went to the Giants Causeway, for instance. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, the planning part of it, the maps and things that I, I use. So let's jump straight in, into it and, and go to maps. So the first thing, the most obvious thing is just Google Maps. So Google Maps is, is really useful. This is Ireland. If I just zoom out a little bit, you can see um, this is the highlands of Iceland here. And I went to this location here, um, which was a fantastic um, location called Lammurn can never say it. I'll put the um, name up here. <laughs> but if you just grab this little man down here, you can probably just see him, then there's lots of little dots appear. And you can drop on one of those dots and see what it's like. So this little man here, I'm just going to drop him here, which is a mountain I want to hike up. And you can see a photo. It's usually a 360 photo of somebody. You can see what it looks like in that particular location. So I can see here there's a path going up here what it looks like when you're walking up. There's a nice valley here. You know, I can, I can go back and I can look at some of the other spots. So people have taken photos, uploaded them to Google Maps, and then you can benefit from them. And this was the hike that I did um, up here, and this was the view that I got. I walked up this, um, from down here, I walked up this ridge line. But just being able to see this, seeing what it's like, it, it, it allows me to plan, so it allows me to think what lens might I need. Well, I, straight away I can see there's going to be lots of detail. I'm going to need to take my longer lens, my 70 to 200. When's the best time to go? So you can look, um, I can see that this is north. The sun rose over here in sort of the northeast and set in the northwest. So I can think, okay, well, if it's going to set over here, then it's going to cast some nice light on the side of these mountains at sunset. So that's going to be a good angle to shoot. Knowing all these things before you hike up there is really, really useful. So Google Maps is a brilliant way of doing it and, and using those photos are good. I also drop that man on road so you can see where particular parking spots might be um, for a new location. And, and that's just really, really beneficial. Going to Google Maps again, if we look at... Um, 
um, Malin Head, where I went to. So this was a new location. This was Malin Head, um, uh, this, this shot here. And when I went there, I did some research on the map because I'd never been there before. So I thought, okay, where am I going to park? So I park here. And then I wanted to give myself time to um, scout all these rocks here. I knew the sun set almost directly in the west, so set over here. So I, I wanted to be shooting towards the sun, really. Um, so I didn't want to be shooting that way, I wanted to shoot towards the sun. And it looked like Malin Head viewpoint was going to be good. If I did a drop, then I could see what it was going to look like. So there's a little photo. Again, I could go in there and I could see what that headland was going to be like, which was really helpful. Um, I saw this house, which I thought might be a nice um, composition, but I could see here that I was going to need a really wide angle lens. So I needed to take my 14 to 24. And then I thought, well, where's the sun going to set exactly on here? So then I, I looked at um, Google Earth. So I've got Google Earth downloaded to my desktop. So if we just pull up Google Earth here, and I've got it set on that viewpoint. So that's that viewpoint here. Um, and Google Earth's really good because you can look in 3D at something. Now, some 3D maps are better than others. This isn't a particularly brilliant 3D map. What it does allow me to do is I've got here switched on the sun and I can go and set the date and it shows me exactly where the sun's gonna set. So I can see the sun is gonna set just to the right of that viewpoint, which is really, really good. And you can see that's exactly what happened um, here. Um, the sun set down there uh, and I knew this was gonna be good. So I knew that going to that location was gonna be really, really beneficial from just looking at the, these maps. I also knew looking at this, that there was some mountains in the background here that might look good in the shot and also might look good with a long lens. So as well as my wide angle lens, I knew I probably need to take a long lens as well. So Google Earth was really beneficial. The other thing to know with Google Earth as well is it's good if you just wanna quickly check stars. There's loads of other things you can use for stars. You can use photo pills on your phone. Um, but if you just use Google Earth, if you just keep scrolling past sunset, you can see what's gonna happen. And if I keep going, you can see that the Milky Way comes down there. Now, obviously, in September, it's not the best time for the Milky Way. You want to be doing that in the summer months where you get more of the core because the core is gonna drop below the horizon. But this actually could be a really good spot um, in summer and you could go and change the dates and check that. So I also use um, OS maps and that's only in the UK though um, and only in England and Scotland. You, you, um, so the OS maps, it Wales, England and Scotland. The OS maps are, are really good, detailed one in 25,000 maps. And there's also a 3D version of that that gives you really detailed contours and 3D maps of um, mountains. So I use that to plan as well. I usually plot my locations on Google map as well, the Google maps as well. So if I just go onto here, you can see that I plotted a number of locations in Northern Ireland and Ireland that I thought would be beneficial and I've also labeled those as well. So it's a really good idea to use Google Maps to plot locations. It's simple to do. If you don't know how to do it, just search how to plot locations on Google and on YouTube and, and, and you'll be able to find out how to do that. So that's all the map research that I do. Um, then I do some online research. So I will look at Instagram. So, so if I search Malin Head in Instagram here, I can find all the posts from Malin Head. And that's a good way of seeing what type of um, shots might be taken there, what the angles might be, is there anything different? And I find it looking at Instagram is good to get a general idea of location, but what I don't do is try and find as many photos that people of landscape photographers have taken, because I don't want to influence what they've done. I just want to get a general idea of what the location's like and what the potential um, shots might be. So I don't spend a huge amount of time doing that, but I always look at Instagram and, and look at hashtags on Instagram. Um, I also look on YouTube, um, so I'll do a search on YouTube, see so if anybody's done a YouTube video about that location, it's always a good way. Um, if you go into Iceland, then Mass Peter Everson has done a huge amount of videos from Iceland, and um, they are absolutely awesome and a brilliant resource for, for going there. Um, and then I also look at walk, so if you type in like Malinhead walk or... Um, uh, you know, the, the walk that I did in Iceland, in Langmuir, that place, <laughs> then if you type that in to Google, then you can often find walks 
um, that show photos along the way so you can get an idea of what the walk might be and if there's any good photos to be taken along that walk. So there's a huge amount of research you can do on the internet before you actually get to that location. The other thing that I do is ask people. Um, landscape photographers are a friendly bunch of people. We're, we're, we're usually really helpful. Um, maybe people don't want to share their locations online to everybody, but if you ask them where a particular um, shot was taken, certainly if you ask me, I'll, I'll tell you where it was taken. Um, and um, it's really useful to do a bit of research. I have to say, when I went to Ireland, I had a lot of people reach out to me, a lot of landscape photographers reach out to me, and it's probably the friendliest bunch of landscape photographers that I've, I've ever met, and they were really helpful and, and shared lots of locations and tips of places to go and how to access them and things like that. So just ask other people that have taken shots there. I'm sure they'll be really helpful. And then the final thing of a bit of research that I do is just look at webcams. Um, so this is a good example when I went to Madeira, um, I was looking at a webcam here, and this was a webcam of, for the Fennel Forest. So this was down at sea level, but it looked up at this headland here. And if I look at a time lapse, um, you can see that there's some cloud on it up here. And when there was cloud there, that pretty much meant that Fennel Forest um, was in cloud because the cloud was really high. It was like, I think about a thousand meters up. So it's a really good way, looking at that webcam of seeing what it was like. I do that with fog and um, when I've got woodland locations as well. So just looking at webcams online is just a fantastic way of seeing that location. Um, and then the other thing that I do is check the weather. Uh, so one of the things that I did before I went to Ireland was look at the surf map. Um, there's always usually surf maps online. Magic Seaweed's a good resource, but this was just surfforecast.com. I think they do the, the ski forecast as well. But you can see that they've got the wave energy map, the wave height, height map, and the wind map. So you can see now, um, if I look at this week, then you can see that there's a big swell coming in towards, um, I'm actually going to the Faroes, so on Friday, it looks like we're gonna get some big waves in, in the Faroes. So that can help to plan when you go. If you've got like a few dates that you can go to a particular location, or maybe you're looking at your own coastline and seeing whether that there's, a, there's any changing conditions, then wave maps are a really good way of doing that if you're doing coastal photography. And then the main um, weather app that I use when I'm on location is VentuSky. So we'll just jump into this now. So this is just in the UK. Um, you can look at wind speed, you can um, look at different times. I think I paid for this, but it wasn't very much money. Um, what I find really useful is the clouds. So this is total cloud cover. Um, and you can then see, I can see what the cloud cover is like. So you could see, for instance, tonight, it looks like there's going to be on the horizon from where I am, there's going to be some total cloud cover. So there might not be a sunset or it might, no, it looks like it's going to be a lot of cloud cover. If I go down to the morning, then again, there's going to be cloud cover. But what you can do is you can look for um, situations where the cloud might be clearing from the east um, if it's sunrise and from the west if it's sunset. And you can also look at low, medium and high clouds on here as well which is really, really useful because an ideal situation is where you don't have any high clouds, but you have a little bit of medium and low clouds to give you a little bit of atmosphere. Um, and I just find looking at that weather map really, really useful. Okay, so we've planned it, we've looked at some maps, we've looked at some weather apps, we've looked at some webcams. Um, you know, we pretty much know where we're gonna go. So what happens when you're on location? When you get to location, you've only got one chance to get there. You've decided to go to this particular headland because that looks like the weather's gonna be best, um, but you can't go, go to it again. So this is, um, this is where it's really, really important to try and choose a composition or a location you're gonna stay, that, that there's a, maybe one or two compositions um, within like a 50 meter distance, and just stay there for a few hours. So I like to arrive to a sunset location at least three, maybe four hours before. Um, and then that gives you time to sort of walk around, find that composition, don't get your tripod out, just leave your tripod alone um, and probably just shoot with your phone or if not, just handheld with your camera and go along the coast, in, in, in this case on Malin Head, I just walked along the coast until I found this location and then I just stayed there. I, I sat in this exact location on this grass here for two and a half, maybe three hours. Um, and 
Where I didn't do that, so the Giants Causeway, I got less good shots, so worse shots. Um, so when I went to the Giants Causeway, I just didn't listen to my own advice, really. I set my tripod up, um, I, I then tried to get a composition, and I thought, oh, this isn't working, but I'd spent like 30, 40 minutes there, then I changed, and then I spent 30, 40 minutes there, and then none of them were really good because I wasn't observing one composition for long enough. So I didn't get the right shutter speed, um, I, the light wasn't right in, in the location because I'd switched between different locations, and actually the best light, I should have been at the first location, not the last location. Whereas on the Malin Head one, where I um, actually walked along the headland, took a few shots handheld, thought, I'm not gonna stay there, I'm not gonna stay there, and then chose a location, knowing that I wasn't gonna be able to shoot those other locations, I shot this one really well, and I still managed to get a few different shots, like, like these two. Now, one with a long lens here and one with a super wide angle lens, one that was long exposure, one was short exposure. Um, and be I got those good shots because I was in that one location. I was just observing more than I was shooting. And it's the most important advice, really. You've just got to accept that you're not gonna get multiple compositions. Um, I didn't accept that Giants Causeway. I got a little bit excited. I ended up getting something that was just average. So you've got to accept that. I should have just stuck with one composition, probably this composition here. I should have stayed there until, until the end of the evening. I would have got a much better shot of that one location. You accept that, and I guarantee you'll come away with a better shot or shots than if you try and shoot multiple places and you're walking up and down hundreds of meters. And it's not just here that I've done that. I did the same in Madeira to get these two shots here. Um, you know, I was in that one location. I could have shot all sorts of different things at, the, at this location, but I just concentrated on this one tree and it made such a big difference. The final thing I want to say is just using your time effectively. So if you can stay in one location, so if you can just sit in that one location and you just observe it, and then you're gonna observe how the waves hit the rocks. You're gonna see you know, if, if there's certain flows of waves that might work better. If you're just looking at a mountain scene, you're gonna see how the light's hitting it, hitting the mountain. So for instance, this was a good example. I stayed here for a, a long time to observe the light and that allowed me to see the light on the on this hut and see that as the light was going, it would leave the mountain in the background before it left this hut. And if I had just arrived, I wouldn't have got this shot, but by staying and just observing this scene for a long time, allowed me to get that shot. So um, it, it just allows you to trial things with your camera. You can just set it up. You maybe need to do a focus stack. You can play about with that without rushing because you've got maybe two hours just looking at that one scene. It may be that it doesn't work, but I guarantee it'll give you a better chance of getting an awesome shot. And that's what you want to do if you've only got one visit to one location. Okay, so that's it. I hope that's been useful. Um, it's how I approach going to a location. I don't always get it right, but it, it definitely helps. Um, I've got a bit of a giveaway. I wanna give away these two prints. Um, I'm gonna try and give away prints in most of my videos now. Um, uh, and I'll talk about that in a second, but first I just want to mention Squarespace who have sponsored this week's video. Thanks very much Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Um, it's, it's really interesting actually because um, a lot of people share their portfolio of, of images on Flickr and things like that, but it doesn't really give you the control of your images. And I think setting up your own website where you can showcase your, your images and showcase them in the, the, the look and feel that you want is, is a great reason to build um, a website. So if you are looking to build a website, then Squarespace makes it super easy. You don't need any technical skills. There's loads of templates. Um, go and check it out. My, my website set up with Squarespace. And if you're looking to set it up, um, then you can get 10% off your first purchase with offer code Nigel or use forward slash Nigel. Okay, so onto the competition, the giveaway of these prints. So I wanna give away these two prints here, this one and, and, and the other one. Um, this, this is probably my favorite, the longer exposure one, but I like them both. 
So to win these two prints, you've just got to suggest an idea for a future video. The idea, the comment with the most likes after a week will get these two prints. A few weeks ago, I gave away a print to Jake, um, who had an amazing idea of just shooting in just an average um, location, like a park or a zoo or something like that. Um, I'm definitely going to take him up on that and I'm, I've got a plan for, 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 for that in a, in a future video. So um, if you are the most liked um, comment, then you've got a, a chance of me making that video, but you've also got a chance of winning these two prints. Okay, thanks ever so much for watching and until next Sunday, bye.